I was joined by Christine Graham, MSP, and by leading criminal QC, Paul McBride. I began by asking Christine Graham if she's trying to keep the story in the spotlight, no matter what. Well, it's not already in the public domain. I've checked the transcript from the trial, and the fact is the question was asked if the fragment of circuit board, which, by the way, could be as small as on the top of my thumb, that's the piece of evidence, had been examined by the man who worked in the Munich factory, and he said yes, but he didn't, wasn't asked whether it was examined in Munich. That was never said. Those words were not in the trial uh, transcript, which I've checked carefully today. So, so the there's a bit of wrong in what it said today. There's then? a bit of smoke and mirrors going on here uh, about the issue, and also the fact that this fragment of circuit board wasn't just in Munich. Two months later, it was in Washington, and when this was put to Lord Peter Fraser, the then Lord Advocate uh, at the time, who was in charge of the investigation, if he was aware that this fragment of circuit board had left the country, he was not. And he has said on public record he would be very unhappy if it had left Scotland as it was the vital piece of evidence. But some people might ask you, where does this actually take us? Well, Are we any further forward with this knowledge? The, the very important thing about this piece of circuit board is it was the key piece of evidence that brought Libya into the picture. And without that, Libya's not in the frame at all, in fact, I don't think it could be indicted, let alone could there have been a prosecution. So if you have a vital piece of evidence that has been moved about, and in fact, frankly, there is not even a log of where it went to in that period of time, which there should be, with any piece of evidence, your case would collapse. Paul McBride, is it time for an inquiry now just to get to the bottom of all these questions, not just those raised by Christine Graham, but others, including Jim Swire? You know, the, the, the time to test someone's guilt or innocence is in the Court of Criminal Appeal. McGrath abandoned his appeal. He was under no obligation to do so. It could have continued posthumously, and he chose not to follow that route either. In relation to what Christine said, it is thoroughly misleading. The fact of the matter is the defence knew all about this MST-13 timer and the fragment called PT-35. They knew all about it in 1990. They had it examined by their own defence analysts. It was raised as an issue during the trial. Mm -hmm. The idea that it was a fabrication is a complete and utter nonsense and it was never out of the control and custody of the Scottish police, either in Munich or in Germany, and she knows it. And I have to say to Christine, this is not the first time a false allegation has been made by her. She will remember recently making a false allegation in relation to a senior official in Crown Office regarding retaining information that she claimed would have led to McGrath's innocence. She reported him to the Chief Constable and the complaint was dismissed. Had she been an ordinary member of the public, she might have found herself charged with wasting police time. So we've heard this from Christine before. I like her are very these, much, but I have to, I have to say, Christine yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say to you, what she's saying tonight is just misleading the public well, and doing discredit to herself and to the Parliament. Well, may, may I deal with, with the, the fact that it was always in police custody? The, the inspector who was in charge of the investigation in Scotland has contradicted himself. At one point, he says to a journalist, to a journalist in Dutch television, it was never out of Scotland. But he then gave a precognition to the Crown saying, yes, it left Scotland in custody of the police. He has now changed. He is, now, this is a vital piece. We are, we are having contradictory well, how, well, how evidence. How vital is it, though, given that the appeal will never happen, well, the point that Paul McBride I'll, makes? I'll, I'll deal with, with Paul McBride's point there. I was in the criminal appeal court when Al McGrahi's counsel abandoned his appeal, and she said something terribly interesting, Maggie Scott. She said that Mr McGrahi abandoned his be appeals, believing, abandoned his appeal, believing it would assist in his applications, plural. That was, he believed in doing this, it would assist with compassionate release where it wasn't necessary, and it would also assist with prisoner transfer was it was man where it was mandatory. So somewhere into Mr. McGrahy's thinking had come the thought that he had to abandon his appeal to get home, and even for compassionate release. Now, and, and, a man and, and, who had, a man who had already, in my view, served eight or nine years in a Scottish prison for something he did not commit, bearing in mind the Scottish Criminal Cases okay, well, Review Commission report to Paul with these issues has never been tried. The evidence that I believe would have acquitted him would never been tried in court. The this wider issue, Paul no McBride, is system. actually about the question mark that seems to continue to hang over Scottish justice. Well, all of this information was available to his defence team. How they used it was a matter for them. Mm. 
Interestingly enough, uh, Christine has talked about McGrahy abandoning his appeal. The position is he was seen by Kenny McCaskill. We don't know what happened at that meeting in Greenock Prison. I think Christine has claimed on a previous occasion to have seen a memo to the effect that uh, McCaskill was under pressure to persuade McGrahy to drop his appeal. And if she's got that memo, I think we'd all like to see it. Or, or has that been made up as well? The fact I, of the, well, the fa- that's a disgraceful, no, well, that's a disgraceful that, accusation that, no, for that, me. That's for, what for many you things said. I, there were many that things I see, you said. I do not make them up. That, well, let us see the memo then, Christine. At what point do we draw a line under all of this, Christine Well, Graham? you see, what we have... I don't understand why Mr McBride, who is in, an advocate, is not keen like me to see the criminal justice system in Scotland acquitted for it to be a clean slate. While all these questions are there, while the second tranche of the appeal didn't go ahead with the new evidence, including the bit about the fragment of the timer that we now know has been in a couple of places which it shouldn't have been in, the problems with identifying McGrahy, which we also know about, I would have thought you would be with me, Paul, in saying, let's have an independent inquiry. Let's have an independent inquiry, an international one if necessary. But your call would have more credence had it not been Mr McGrahy himself who dropped the appeal, wouldn't it? So he's guilty. No, no. Of course he still stands as a guilty man. And it was his choice to remain a guilty man uh, uh, by not pursuing his appeal. If you let me finish... The point is that this man was desperate to return home. He had no faith in the justice system. Why should he have in Scotland now? I have no faith at the moment until we have this evidence tried. I don't want it tried in the media. I want to see all this evidence come before an independent inquiry and then both of us can see the truth. Well, well if, like, just very briefly, very briefly. We have seen the truth. We had a trial in front of three of the country's most senior judges. We had an appeal in, con- in front of the, 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 co- the country's five most senior judges. Yeah, okay. And he then no. abandoned his second chance after the referral by the Scottish Criminal Cases Review Commission. Okay. That's all we need uh, to know. Okay, I'm may... sorry, I'm afraid we're absolutely out of time, and, but I'm sure we will return to this. Thank you both very much for joining us this evening. Cool. Time for a quick look at a couple of front pages before we go tonight.